So this is the first question. So why should we, uh, you know, review literature? What is a big deal in uh, doing this? Uh, let, let me ask our, one of our residents here, Dr. Niyantri, what do you think? Why, why do you think that we should do literature search in the first place? So to know the, the current research which has been done. Yeah. And uh, yeah. to see the lack of... So basically the answer is very simple. So if you are a cricket player on, on the ground, uh, you, it's important that you need to understand your players, isn't it? Co-players. You need to know overall the batsmen, overall the you know bowlers, and uh, there's only one wicket keeper. You can't afford to have too many wicket keepers, isn't it? So that's how the game is. So you need to understand. Similarly, when it comes to research, you need to definitely know what people have done before, what people have done already, and it's imperative that you understand the lacunae in literature. In other words, what people have not done, what is still, what is that thing which is still not answered. And then accordingly, you have to, you know, design your research or frame your research question. So your research question, in effect, should at the end of your, uh, you know, research project, you should answer the unanswered lacunae. That is your, you know, that is your goal. That is your objective. So you have to identify the lacunae in literature. That's like the, uh, you know, first and foremost step. And that's, uh, that's like a good start in the game. So I would strongly recommend that you have to Identify the lacunae in literature. It's not just for the heck of, you know, thesis or any research project to frame a question. You have to frame a question in such a way that you identify the lacunae and try to answer that. So in, if you do that, then probably, you know, your work will go, uh, uh, you know, very long way. So having said that, when should we do this? When should we do this? We have to identify lacunae. Okay, fine. So when do we do that? When you when you write your thesis paper? What, what do you think, Dr. Suganya? So what do you, what do you, when, when do you do this? Before selecting the topic. Perfect, perfect. So, so it's important that you have to do this literature review before you even frame your research question. I'm sure by now all of you are, all of you must have, you know, fixed your thesis topic. But have you done literature review? Good, good. If you have done it, it's good. So if you've not done it, please go back and get it done. So it's important that you do your literature review and identify. Uh, you know, the work done and you know, the lacunae and everything before you frame your research questions. There's no point in doing a research that somebody has already done several times and many people have done already. It's no point in doing it. It's not going to get accepted. It's not going to publish. You can't take it anywhere. So it's going to, your work is going to be your base. So it's important that do literature review before you frame your question. That's, that's very important. So having said that, how, how are you going to do this? How are you going to do literature search? There are various online platforms, online tools that are available. Some of these are very, uh, you know, the, the, this list will, you know, give you some idea. Uh, Scopus, uh, PubMed or Medline, Web of Science, uh, Willy Online, ProQuest, Sinahill, and uh, you have also Skihub, uh, which is a little controversial. The court case going on, uh, most of you should be knowing, but as long as it's available, we can. That's why I did not mention as well. But out of this, which is better? Which tool do you want to really use it? It's very you know, difficult to answer that question. Which tool is better? You can't really you know, comment on uh, this thing. It's like an artisan using uh, you know, different tools. Every tool will have its own pros and cons. For one particular work, you can't use uh, an in inappropriate tool, isn't it? You need to use appropriate tool for the appropriate work. So it depends on the type of research that you do. So the general, it's an interesting paper by you know, Michael uh, Guzenbar from Johans University. Uh, South Africa, they have done a unique research uh, comparing uh, various uh, online tools, online search engines, uh, research uh, search engines, uh, right from uh, Google Scholar, PubMed, and 26 other resources. They they designed a uh, you know, questionnaire, uh, uh, the 27 uh, cri criteria point questionnaire, and then they analyzed uh, you know the precision, recall, etc. So they the general recommendation is either uh, Scopus or PubMed are good. And they very categorically said that Google Scholar is not so appropriate uh, if you choose uh, that as a primary search engine. That is something we need to understand. But overall, we can say Scopus and PubMed are good. But uh, I said that no one is so perfect. You know, every search engine has got its own pros and cons. You need to understand that. But I would strongly suggest that for basic level of research, PubMed does whatever we want. So we'll stick on to PubMed and then see uh, how we use it. That's better. Scopus is probably for you know a bit advanced uh, sort of a research. So we'll we'll see how, how we can uh, make use of PubMed better. So this, this is something that is very important. 
So before you get on to PubMed, uh, you need to understand that PubMed is not like Google search, isn't it? Google is very smart. Google is very smart. The moment you type something, it prompts you. It gives you prompt. That's called adjacency searching. So it, it gives you that uh, and it makes you lazy or whatever. It's smart. Rather, it, Google is smart. But PubMed is not so. It's smart, of course, but it, it doesn't make you lazy. It expert expects some smartness from the user. So you need to be smarter to make uh, the PubMed work smart, smarter for you that, that way. So you need to know how to use PubMed. So that's what probably we are going to look at uh, in this uh, lecture. So I strongly recommend that all of you today, if you have not already, create your own account. I keep telling my residents here in Chennai uh, that you create your account. I'm sure all of you must have created. It's very important that you have to create your own PubMed account. Our PubMed is actually a part of NCBA, which is nothing but National Center for Biotechnology Information. So by now you should have your own NCBA account because there are very clear advantages if you have logged in. When you are doing literature review, if you have logged in and then do literature review, there is definitely a clear advantage. You know, uh, review of literature is not it's not going to happen on a you know a single day, isn't it? It's it's a process. You're going to do it today, tomorrow, and then you're going to probably keep a day off and then start. You know, how are you going to have the continuum? How are you going to you know continue what you have done? So when you when you have already logged in and do whatever uh, you know you want, it's auto saved. It's there in your history. So it's there in your history. So it's easy for you to continue continue the review process sorry a little uh, yeah review of literature process so it's very important you create your account and every time you do login sorry every time you search ensure that you are logged in your name should be there and then you do that's very important i strong strongly recommend that and you should also know that pubmed is only an online phase online phase of the uh, of midline midline is like the you know uh, the original the core uh, thing which has got all the full text. Which is, it's a database. It has got the full text. Whereas PubMed will, is an online page. It will only have, uh, you know, uh, abstract title sometimes. So it's just uh, certain articles are, uh, you know, are available uh, full text in PubMed. I'll tell you what, what, what is that. So Medline comes under, you know, United States of National Library of Medicine. So it's US based uh, thing that you should know. And uh, this is an important thing PubMed Central, PMC. Some articles you will see this PMC tag. Anybody aware of that? PMC. So this screenshot, what you're seeing to your top right is our list of publications. If you see the fourth one, the novel do-it-yourself anti-fogging device, and you just compare it with the sixth one, the modified air-assisted silicon oil removal. It says free PMC article. What is that? So the PMC is nothing but peer PubMed central. And below you can see two screenshots. You can see a modified uh, air assisted silicon oil removal, which is published in Oman Journal of uh, Ophthalmology. It says uh, PMC full text here. Yeah. Can you can you all see this PMC full full text tag? There is a tag here, but in Retina, this uh, novel do it yourself anti fogging device, which was published in Retina, doesn't have a tag. So whenever you see this tag, it's ensure that uh, the full text is available. You just all you need to do is go and click that. PubMed Central means there is full text available for you all. So it's either by the publisher or the journal itself, they want to you know, make uh, the readers, uh, for the benefit of all readers, they make it open access. Or sometimes authors can also do it. You, you got to pay a little more to the publisher and make your work open for all. It's called open access. You can also do that. If you have not done that, uh, to let's say for Retina, it doesn't uh, come. For full text is not available. So only the you know, abstract will be available. So this is how it works, PubMed Central. So being in Aravind, you don't have a problem. All that you need to do is you get a list of articles that you want and send it to the librarian at Madurai or Pondia, wherever. So within 24 to 48 hours, you're going to get it. So it doesn't matter whether it's full text or uh, full text is available or not. So being in Aravind, it's, it's quite easy. The job is so simple for you all. So, so whenever you want to search anything, let's say I, I, I want to search uh, diabetic macular edema now. I put diabetic macular edema in the search box and then I've searched. I got 6,768 articles now. Do you think it's possible for me to uh, read all these 6,768 articles? My DNB curriculum will get over. My entire three years or two years course will get over, isn't it? It's not so easy to do it. So how are you going to work? How are you going to narrow down or funnel down your uh, you know, work and then get only the relevant articles that you probably uh, would want to see uh, open and see and then uh, you know, uh, take your thesis pro project further. 
So there are some I know tools available on the page. If you see to your left side, uh, there is a sidebar where you have multiple filters. Like you know, when you do Amazon shopping, you have multiple filters, isn't it? So we are, we are all of us are already used to it. Just that we are all six six blind. When you open this PubMed, we don't look into all these things. But when you open Amazon, we you know try to see each and every corner. So it's the interest that drive you know makes everything uh, you know work better for you. So look at this. You are to your sidebar. Can you see this? It says uh, 1964 to 2022. Okay, you can simply drag this circle. You can expand, you can collapse, you can accordingly titrate. So I can, uh, let's say from 2020 to 2022. So within those three years, I'll get the articles. Whatever published uh, uh, in this area, diabetic macular edema, I'll get that. Okay, then you can make it five years, you can make it uh, you know, 20 years, whatever. So you don't want to go back and you know, get articles that have been published uh, you know, 40, 50 years back, isn't it? So you want the recent ones, current concepts you want to see. That is very important. That's what even when you write, people don't really appreciate if you put references that are very old, 1990s, 1980s, people don't appreciate it because many things have changed, isn't it? Uh, continuous upgradation is happening and people don't, you know, concepts of there, there have been paradigm shifts in the management and diagnosis part and everything. So you can't quote really old articles. You need to uh, look into the recent ones. So that is there. So you, you, all these things are filters. You can look for uh, you know, articles that have full text, articles that have, uh, if you're okay with just abstract, you can look for that. Uh, you can look for uh, you know, randomized clinical trials or uh, review, uh, review articles or uh, case reports or whatever type of uh, articles that you can uh, you know, uh, put filters or you can, uh, the one uh, five year, 10 year period that you want to you know, look, look at. And you have some additional filters as well. And in fact, uh, uh, down here, you have customized filters. You can actually customize. You can create your own filters if you wish to. You know, PubMed gives that op option as well, though you may not require it uh, all the time because uh, already the filters are good, good enough for you to you know refine your search. I would say. So, so see what what happened now. I have applied two filters. So initially, it's, I got some six thousand odd articles for diabetic macular edema. Then I put now two filters. One is RCT, a randomized control trial, as you can see here. Another thing is five years. I, I, I now I want to see only the diabetic uh, the articles that have been uh, published in this area, diabetic macular edema, in the last five years. I don't want to look back beyond that. So then I got only 183 results. So it's very clear. This is doable, isn't it? Probably now you can uh, look into it. 6,700, probably you can't even uh, get into it. Now it's probably good. You can just go into and see what you want, isn't it? So that's how you work. So you need to use your tools very well and refine your search and get the relevant ones. That's very important. And uh, as I said, there are some additional filters. As you can see, your article type, if you click this, uh, uh, you know, uh, you, you'll get uh, different types of articles. You know, some uh, clinic, if you want to look at the clinical conference papers, if you want to look at uh, you know, RCTs, case reports, legal cases, lectures, something like that, you can clinical trials, phase one, phase two, phase three, phase four, whatever. You, if, you have, if your search is very specific, then you have to use your tools accordingly. Otherwise, you'll end up getting all unrelevant stuff. And species, if you're looking at animal trail, probably you can say it's human trail or animal trail species. You can, uh, I, you, you have an option for that language, English, you know, where, uh, other languages, you can still go ahead. Uh, sex, male, female, sometimes you are looking at, let's say, uh, central serous chorioretinopathy. Uh, we all know that it's uh, more common in males. But if you wish to look at uh, the incidence of CSCR in females, which is supposed to be uh, rare, but though we see a lot of uh, you know, patients, female patients coming with CSCR here, but if you wish to uh, do a research work on that, so CSCR and females, you can still, you know, you can uh, no, filter, you can use a filter and then uh, look into very specific articles that you wish to look at. So similarly journal, the type of publisher, I want to look only what is what has been published in survey of ophthalmology are uh, only in ophthalmology standard journal. I don't want to uh, look at you know uh, in the journals with low impact. So you can you can titrate, you can apply filters and get those uh, articles that you wish to. And age accordingly, uh, younger individuals, elderly. So all of that you can you know it's like uh, you can customize what you want. It's not just typing on that search box and then you know uh, click that search option. You have to use all of this if you if you are very keen. So this is one filter is one concept. So next is this advanced search. What is this advanced search? If you, you can see, can you see here? 
So box here and below which you have this advanced. So click that, it takes you to advanced search box. This is this uh, advanced, this is a screenshot of this advanced uh, search page. So where you can see uh, here, it says all fields. So if you click here, you get the you get a list of so many things where you can uh, select. You, uh, let's say I'm uh, now uh, 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 searching for diabetic macular edema or Avastin. Avastin is uh, uh, for the benefit of residents. I'm sure you you should be know maybe knowing Avastin uh, is is an anti of that we give intravit as intravital injection for some of the uh, macular disorders. So if I put Avastin and then say I want this term Avastin in title, not anywhere. I'm not okay if it's somewhere in the text. I want it to be in the title. I can select. I can select title and put Avastin. So it will give me articles that have this name Avastin only in the title. With somewhere in the text or abstract, it will not show me. Okay. So somebody, uh, some article that compares Avastin and another anti wedge of Bang On. Obviously, it will have its name uh, in the title, isn't it? So if you are very specific and looking for those articles, you can say title Avastin. A title plus if you're okay with title and abstract you can say that or you can select uh, by author author wise or journal wise or date of publication wise i want to see avastin uh, published between uh, this month to this month you can actually select all of that so you have a list of items filters you can apply here this is advanced search and then type, type your name uh, sorry type, type your uh, you know uh, keyword or search term so and then can you see here add so if you click that if you click this, that means you are, uh, you know, typing one term and then you go click here. What comes is this. Can you see here? Add with what? Add with and A and D in caps. Remember A and D add with OR 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 add with not NOT or not. So these three things are very important. This, I'm introducing this concept called Boolean operators. It's extremely important in advanced search. The first concept is Boolean operators. This is very important and it's very useful as well. So you, you uh, add, let's say I type Avastin and I uh, say add with and. And then let's say another anti of drug, uh, Ranibizumab. So if I, if I type uh, like that, so I'll get articles that have uh, Avastin as well as uh, Ranibizumab, both. It should have, every article in my search should have both, Avastin as well as Ranibizumab, or Bevacizumab and Ranibizumab. I'm sure uh, you all know this anti wedge so uh, yeah, you, you'll be able to follow me. So uh, each and every article, if I put and, will have both these terms. Let's say I put or, or, it may have Avastin or it may have uh, Ranibizumab. Either one. Okay. So my search will be broader. Okay. It'll, it's going to give me more articles. And if you put article, each and every article should have both the names. And if I, it, and not is another, if you don't want certain things, I want to look at articles that doesn't uh, talk about. I don't want to look at articles that, sorry, I, I, I want to look at articles uh, rather, I, sorry, I don't want to see articles that talk about ranibizumab. I want to eliminate ranibizumab. I want to eliminate one anti of from my search. You can say Avastin, not ranibizumab. So if there is ranibizumab, that's not going to be shown to me. That's, that will not appear on my screen, isn't it? You can eliminate. Let's say I want to look at macular wall and I don't want to see uh, macular walls uh, following uh, traumatic etiology. I want to see idiopathic etiology, I'm okay with, but traumatic etiology, I don't want. I can eliminate the traumatic. So if there is a term traumatic, then it's not going to be shown. That's what I'm trying to drive. You can eliminate by using not. You can include by saying and or are, and you know it should have both or it can have either. Or is going to be uh, you know more, more uh, broader and uh, sometimes maybe non-specific and is going to be very specific. So all these three terms uh, and or not are called Boolean operators. You will commonly use this. And uh, you may wish to use this uh, in the all fields or title or abstract, whatever. So uh, this is how uh, you can work. This is the first concept. So I'm, I'm not sure whether you can see, but this is what I was trying to talk about. Uh, let me.
sorry we can go to the next slide this one isn't it yes okay so after the filter i applied uh, ranibizumab and uh, avastin here i got some articles uh, i'm not sure whether you can see this or not it's 1400 some uh, articles i got when i applied uh, uh, you know two different uh, anti vegf uh, bevacizumab and ranibizumab and i had put and so which means i get articles that have uh, both these uh, anti vegf so i got some 1440 some articles uh, so then i applied two filters rct i want to see uh, articles that talk about uh, randomized control trials which means head on comparison and published in the last five years then i got only 41 results which is quite doable isn't it so then you look into these articles these are very specific articles according to your uh yeah, you know topic of interest that's what uh, this is the point i'm trying to uh, you know drive in so you need to apply tools that are available and according to your uh, you know type of research based name. so the next important concept is after boolean operators is automatic term mapping or atm this is like the you know uh, very robust uh, state of the art uh, anti uh, artificial intelligence that pubmed has got atm this is uh, based on mesh terminology so normally when we submit a submit an article to any journal we are supposed to provide the keywords isn't it three to five keywords you normally provide these are are the potential mesh terms are medical subheading terms they call it medical subheading otherwise also the indexing team of the every each and every journal will they will literally dissect your paper and then extract as much as possible these terminals so you have a list of n number of uh, you know mesh terminology mesh terms and mesh hierarchy they call it so this is a very strong search engine so in fact when i had put diabetic macular edema and i got 6700 on articles i did not use actually boolean operators isn't it so it works basically using atm search or automatic term mapping or mesh term so mesh search is extremely important when it comes to PubMed. So that's how it works. So there are other things that you may wish to understand is phrase index. Sometimes if you, you know uh, uh, write a phrase and you want to search, let's say uh, I've typed Avastin. And can you see here, just below this ad, which we were discussing, show index. If you click this, it will you know open up uh, all the uh, list of uh, phrases that are available. So when I click that, so after I type Avastin, I got uh, Avastin bio-oncology, Avastin complication, conjugated Avastin, uh, something like that. You know, you have a list of uh, phrases that are available with Avastin. Then when I click uh, Avastin complication, immediately got this article. Sometimes, you know, you'll, it'll be easy for you to get what you want. The Avastin complication, the massive choroidal hemorrhage of the intravitreal administration of Avastin. Fortunately, this is PubMed, uh, you know, PMC, and uh, so you get the full text, isn't it? So sometimes it, uh, this phrase index also works well for you. Uh, these are the commonly used uh, ones, mesh term, ATM search, Boolean operators, and, uh, you know, phrase index. The less common ones are double quotes. Uh, you know, uh, sometimes, you know, if you type heart attack and then put a double quote. So you, can you see here, it's going to give you articles that have uh, heart attack as such. It will not give you articles. Uh, can, can you see here, heart attack without double quote. I have not, I've just eliminated the double quote. It says myocardial infarction, though it's one and the same and it's relevant. But if you put a double quote, you're freezing it. It's going to give you articles that have that name, especially that name. So if you type pseudophakia, so all the articles that have pseudophakia, mentioned pseudophakia, will, will be shown to you. Articles with intraocular lens, but not pseudophakia, will not be shown to you. Though it's one and the same, pseudophakia and intraocular lens are one and the same, but it's not going to be shown to you if you put a double quote. So that sometimes, you know, if you wish to use that, you may uh, just, you, you may understand how it works. Double quotes. One good thing in double quote is if that uh, phrase is not available. So this is based on phrase index. So this works, uh, you know, revolves around this phrase, phrase index that is already there. So if this art attack or pseudophakia, uh, it's not in the phrase index, it goes to, automatically it goes to ATM search. It goes, goes to the mesh terminology and you get articles. So this is how, uh, so if double quote is not in the phrase index, uh, some, you know, if you see, uh, I have put Avastin Ilia, it's a meaningless one, isn't it? So a random uh, phrase I've created, I've created my own phrase Avastin Ilia and I put a double quote. So what happens, obviously quoted phrase, not found, it says not found. Still I got so many articles, thousand hard articles I got. How is it? 
because the ATM or mesh search is turned on now. So double quote, if it's not there in the phrase index, mesh search will be automatically open and you will still get articles. That's what I'm trying to say that if you, sometimes you may use, use this double quote, uh, not to worry if it's not there, you will it will go back to the original conventional way of uh, searching. But in case if I put iPhone, I've asked in iPhone Ilia, it's not in the phrase, you will not get any articles. The ATM search or mesh search is completely turned off if you put an iPhone. So you may, uh, just for uh, you know understanding, you keep this in mind. But uh, you know uh, as I said, these are all less commonly used ones. The Boolean operators, the ATM search, or the phrase index are the most commonly used uh, search uh, you know, way, uh, uh, you know, modes of search. Whereas iPhone and double quotes are less commonly used. iPhone is one way. And uh, wildcard is another, wildcard, asterisk. Uh, sometimes this can be used if you, let's say, if you type plant and then, uh, as I, uh, as you can see in the screenshot, I've typed plant and then put an asterisk. If you do that, asterisk is an I wild card. Uh, it will give you articles that have uh, plant, plants, plantarium, planting, plantation, the entire you know uh, uh, you know extent of words that are possible with that uh, this thing. It's called truncated uh, search, if I'm not wrong. So that will be uh, shown again. If it's not there, then probably the ATM search will not happen. If you put this wildcard, that also you keep in mind. If you put something not relevant, and then if it's not in the phrase index, it's not going to be uh, the mesh, mesh search is not activated by default in this. So wildcard. So just for completion sake, you may uh, understand this as well. So, so having said that. Uh, as I said before, uh, it's not a it's not it's not a one day affair, isn't it? Uh, review of literature is not going to happen on uh, on a day on a single day. So it's a, you need to continue your, uh, what you have done yesterday or day before yesterday. So how are you going to save uh, what you have done before so far? So one way is as I said, if you are already logged in, auto search auto saving is there. So it's there in your history. You have a if you are logged in, you have a dashboard. You have a dashboard where you can uh, see your history, what you have uh, already looked for, and uh, those links are already there. You can use that. Other 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 way is uh, you can see your, uh, uh, you know, sent to. Uh, not sure if it's uh, quite visible to all of you. So here, advanced below the search box, advanced and uh, sent to is there. If you click that, you can actually send to. You can select uh, your the type of uh, the articles that you wish to. Uh, you put a tick here, once you mark it and simply send to, send to option is there, send to your email ID. So the entire list comes to your inbox. Once it's there in your inbox, you can you quickly send it to your librarian or, uh, you know, and then process it further. You want to get the full text in which. So that is one option you can send to your inbox and save it. Otherwise you can send to your, uh, can you see your clipboard, my bibliography collections. You can, you can make, create your own collections in your dashboard. So these are all clear advantages of uh, creating an account and logging in every time when you do research, uh, when you, every time you do search. So if you're already logged in, definitely you will be able to all these things. So you can uh, make your own collection uh, in the topic of your interest, or you can send to your inbox or uh, auto searches, or sorry, auto saving is also there in, that will be in the history. So now you have saved. So this is an interesting thing. You also wish to you know see what people are doing as you are, you know, pursuing your research topic sometimes the research topic takes years together sometimes you know uh, you you have to see what we, you know it's always a race when you are doing imagine uh, assume that there are many people doing the same work you know what they are publishing uh, meanwhile is also very important so you can create an alert uh, in the box down you can see advanced and uh, create uh, you know create alert if you click this if whatever you type let's say diabetic macular edema or the scleral fixation uh, intraocular lens and then i put a create alert you can actually uh, create to your uh, email you can provide your email uh, id inbox and uh, on a monthly you wish to receive uh, notifications on a monthly basis or a weekly basis or a daily basis even if it's none uh, you know all of that you can uh, customize and then uh, uh, you know so that uh, you are always up to date in in your field of interest topic of interest what others are doing so this is a screenshot uh, of my own inbox where you can see i keep getting uh, from okay, can you see here my ncbi it says all or any article related to skill fixated intraocular lens i'll be 
up to date. I, it comes to my inbox. So I am always, uh, you know, up to date when it comes to SFIL. So this is how you, you are, you know, at par with uh, uh, other scientists around. So this is an important tip, I would say. You have to create alert to your uh, thesis topic. So as I said, this is a dashboard, my NCBI, if you are logged in, you can see my bibliography, which means you can create your CV kind of a thing. It's, uh, it's automatic, otherwise you can update as well. Uh, you can manage your bibliography and uh, recent activity, as I said, it's uh, saved here, whatever you have done, uh, it's already there and you can make your collection. You can put your favorites and uh, now have a separate collection of uh, whatever you wish to. So that's how it works. This is your dashboard. So I'm sure uh, yeah, you know uh, you got some fair idea uh, how to go about when it comes to literature review using PubMed especially. So the most important point is you need to be active learner. As I said, I keep learning even for this talk when I you know did my uh, literature you know search for this particular topic. I learned for a few things like wildcard and also I, I wasn't aware before wildcard. To be very honest with you all, so it's a, it's a uh, you know uh, uh, it's a pro learning is a continuous process. That's what I'm trying to stress. You have to be very receptive, open, and you have to be an active learner. That's very important. So I am an active learner. So I wish all of you to be the same and uh, all the very best. Thank you. Thank you, madam.